You saw in the video is shipping containers. Perfect example to understand Docker containers from different perspective. Containers are mainly used to ship cargoes like bicycles, bikes, cars, buses, aeroplane, space station. Well, I think space station is too much. But anyway, point is we use containers to store some stuff and transport it. Similarly. in a docker container we store our application and then deploy it on a server in this video let's see what is containerization before knowing about containerization first see which problem it is solving let's assume you have developed one software which works on a node.js version 10 and you want to deploy it so earlier we used to install specific version of node.js manually on a server and then we used to execute our software on it but imagine you have created another software and this time new software demands node.js version 18 and here you will face actual problem you cannot deploy your software on a same server because current active node.js version is 10 to solve this problem containerization technique has been introduced in a containerization so we basically bundle all the dependency along with our software so since dependency is installed inside the container rather than on operating system now we can run multiple containerized application with different node.js version on a same not server. just that containerization brings lot of other features like portability scalability fault tolerance agility and many other we will see all of them when we will learn docker but for now let's learn how containerization application life cycle works okay so the journey of containerized application start with developer developer for develop softwares then they use containerization tools to build container images of that software so there are multiple containerization tools available in the market docker is one of them then the infrastructure layer comes into the picture now obviously to deploy and run containerized application we need servers so this infrastructure layer is hardware layer in which we create servers then after infrastructure layer means when you have server hardware ready operating system layer comes into the picture so linux is the popular operating system for the containerization and it is a first choice for majority of the developers then once we have our server setup ready container engine comes into the picture this container engine creates container from the container images container engine also manages multiple container on a same server this container engine is also a communication medium between operating system and the containers and once we have container running on a server deployment process is done you can peacefully use your application from anywhere that's how easy it is to use containerized application so i think that's enough for this video see you in the next one understanding how docker works will help you understanding what is role of docker image and what is role of docker container all right so let's get started so in order to get start with docker first thing you need to do is you need to set up your infrastructure so now this infrastructure is nothing but your hardware if you want to use docker locally then you will need to have laptop you need to have desktop but if you want to go with cloud you can choose ec2 instance you can use aws server you can use gcp the condition is you need to have hardware okay so once your infrastructure is ready the next thing you need to do is you need to install operating system on it okay so we call it as host operating system so if you are using docker locally your laptop with windows operating system or linux or mac operating system will work if you are using cloud then you need to select operating system before creating instance so the linux is recommended operating system but you can choose as per your requirements all right so once you have host operating system ready the next important thing comes into the picture is docker engine and this is really important because okay because docker engine controls the entire docker flow okay it is communication medium between your container and your operating system so docker engine is important without docker engine you cannot use docker okay 
So this Docker engine, we can install locally. You can refer documentation. And if you're using cloud, you need to install this Docker engine as well. But there are some cloud service provider which gives you package of this, all these three things. So you do not have to do any setup. You just have to launch the instance and they provide services which has Docker engine installed by default. So you can search for that solutions as well. All right. So once you have these three things ready, now the main thing comes into the picture. That is nothing but Docker image. These are the properties of Docker image. First important property is Docker image is executable package of a software that includes everything. Now, if you know Docker a little bit, Docker basically believes in including everything inside the container. So you have your dependencies. So for an example, you are using Node.js, you need to install Node.js inside, inside the container. So that is your dependencies. Then also, you, doc, then also Docker holds your code, your system tools, system libraries and settings uh, that you need for your project to run. Okay. Basically inside the Docker, we have everything. So the image is nothing but executable package. Okay. The second property of image is read only. So once you have image ready, you cannot change anything inside of it. If you want to make any changes in your code base, and then in that case, you will need to create another image and you need to distribute that with another version. Okay, this is how it works. But once you have created any image, you cannot make changes inside of inside that image. Okay, third property of images, it is zip file and 7-zip file. It is nothing new. It's just a snapshot of your running container code. Okay, so and the fourth property of images, it is portable. So that means the main use case of images, let's say if any developer Let's say developer one working on Docker and she has some work done and developer two wants developer one's work. So in that case, how developer one can share her work with developer two. So in that case, developer one has to create Docker image and that is nothing but portable. So once Docker image is created, she can transfer that zip file or seven zip file to developer two, developer two will import that Docker image inside her machine. So this is how it works. So basically we use Docker image to transfer our Docker work. All right. So now let's understand what is Docker container. So these are the properties of Docker container. So basically Docker container is running instance of your image. So Docker image, which we have created in previous step, we will use it, we will run it and we will call that running instance as a Docker container. Okay. So Docker container, and this is really important and basic feature of Docker containers that allows to isolate Docker containers environment. So basically whatever running inside Docker containers is completely isolated from outside of the world. Okay. And the third property of Docker container is Docker container has its own memory has its own CPU allocated. If Docker container runs out of memory, it will not harm any other running containers. So this is how it, so this is how it works. Okay. So this is how, so this is how the entire Docker structure will look like on a higher level. So we have already seen what is infrastructure. Once we have infrastructure, we will have host machine, then we will have Docker engine. And on the top of it, we will fetch our Docker images or we will create images and we will use those images to create containers. Okay. So if you see this container zero, which is initiated from Ubuntu and Docker contain con and the container one is also initiated from Ubuntu. So you can create multiple instances or multiple containers from any image. Okay. So another example of container is Node.js. So if you see this Node.js is also running container and we gave it a name as container two. And there is one more container running, which is container three. And this container is running from this Python image. So this is how the process will work. Developers will create Docker file. They will build an image. And once the image is ready, we can run it. And once the image is run, we can call it as a container. So we are discussing about Docker. 
so it becomes really important to understand difference between monolithic and microservices because docker always follow microservices architecture monolithic architecture was older method that we were using to create softwares but soon enough we realized monolithic architecture is not for scalable applications so scalable applications like netflix amazon so these applications are really huge they are handling a lots and lots of different types of data okay and they have different types of features as well so creating those applications in a monolithic architecture is really a bad idea so here we will take one example let's say we are creating one e-commerce website let's say amazon website okay this is your amazon website okay so what will happen if we create it with the help of monolithic architecture if we do the same thing using microservice architecture we will discuss that here okay so imagine amazon website has different features like login uh, we want to allow user to order then card feature so all these features will be there in this website similarly let me put that here as well so currently we decided okay our website which is e-commerce website this will allow users to log in this is this will allow users to search products this will allow user to add that into the cart and user can order it okay now if you see if you observe each of this feature so each of this feature will face different problems in production okay for an example in a login system we might face problems with security in a, in, in search option we might face problem with availability okay so every single feature has a different challenges okay if we go with monolithic architecture we will create one host okay let's say it is ec2 instance ec2 instance and we will host our entire application on this instance itself okay so that means there is only one server which is handling all these four features okay if someone wants to log in he will go through this server itself he, if someone wants to search new product he will go through this server itself okay in case of microservices we create we divide our application into multiple services and that's why the name is microservices so in this case we divided our application in four different parts so login service will be different our searching service will be different our order service will be, will be different and cart service will be different okay so since this is a different code base and this is a separate service we can host this service on different host let's say this is our host one and this is we can consider host one as one ec2 instance we will create another host two this will be again ec2 instance and we will host our searching logic over here okay so in short we divided our application into multiple parts we call it as a microservices and we host that microservice on different host okay this is all up to this is all up to us either we want to host it on a different host or we want to host it on the same host it depends on complexity and requirement of this service okay but that is different part but dividing our application into multiple services allows us to host it on a different hosts okay now what benefit we get with this okay if we go with monolithic architecture now imagine if this server got shut down due to some reasons in that case users will not be able to access our entire application okay user cannot log in user cannot search cannot order cannot put items into the cart okay so that's the disadvantage of using monolithic architecture because everything is hosted on a single server okay as a single process in case of microservices let's say if host one got shut down so user cannot log in into the system but still users those are already logged in they can search products they can order products they can add that into the cart now with this with this approach we are ensuring that our application is highly available okay so this enables high availability okay another advantage is let's say you have team of 
five members and you go with monolithic architecture now even if you divide a task let's say one user will do login one user will code for searching one will code for order and one will code for cart still you will have same code base okay you will have only one git repository you will have only one server still it is not maintainable because there is one only one code base and if you want to release your application uh, if you make changes in let's say add cart option still you have to deploy your entire application okay so that is not a good approach because you have changes in only cart section still you have to update login search and order section because this is on this is same code base and running on monolithic architecture but in case of microservice architecture if we only update cart option then we will okay then we will only update this cart service so in short we can easily maintain microservice architecture compared to monolithic architecture so maintainability will be also there okay let's also let's say if all of a sudden people started searching lot of products but compared to that people are not logging into the system people are not ordering new items they are just searching it okay so in that case you have to scale your entire server because even if there is a traffic in searching itself still you have to scale your entire server because you want to serve those users but in this case let's say so traffic on a search increased so in that case you will only scale up this particular server okay so that again allows you to handle services nicely and this becomes scalability issue so microservice architecture is also scalable so we saw availability we saw maintainability and we saw scalability okay so in all these three terms microservices are winning because we have divided tasks between multiple services so let's discuss one more property so let's discuss about complexity you can clearly see here since there is only one code base it is really complex to manage this is disadvantage and code becomes a lot more complex okay but in case of microservices since there are separate services separate code base so even if someone make changes in search logic log login logic will be same as it is so this is an advantage of using microservices compared to monolithic architecture and the reason why we are discussing about monolithic and microservice architecture is because docker works with microservices architecture so we divide multiple tasks and we create container so this login logic will be another container let's say c1 searching will become another container same as order and cart okay so we will create different containers for different services and we will create our application using microservices architecture so this and and if we do so we get all these benefits that we have discussed like availability maintainability scalability and complexity okay so i hope you have understood basic difference between monolithic and microservices architecture was the old method which we were using earlier before microservices architecture and this still works with smaller applications so it's not like monolithic architecture is old school method now it is still in use it depends on what is your requirement so we are mainly discussing about how to create and manage large scale applications like we discuss amazon okay so in that case microservices architecture fits better so that's why we are in favor of microservices architecture but you are but if you are developing your portfolio or any basic websites okay which is not offering multiple features so in that case you can still go with monolithic architecture okay so i hope you have understood this entire concept if you have any questions or queries you can ask that in comments Great. so in this video we will see how we are going to use docker throughout the course to practice docker commands okay so we have two ways in front of us first way is set up docker locally okay so this is official documentation from docker to install docker locally docker supports three different operating systems mac windows and linux but let me clear you one thing at the beginning we are not going to set up anything locally so wait for 
second approach so if you are a windows user so when wants to install docker windows locally you need to have either windows 11 64 bit or windows 10 64 bit if you have windows 7 or any other windows operating system you will not be able to use docker windows second system requirement which is the most important is 4 gb of system ram and 64 bits of processor and another important system requirement is your bios level hardware should support virtualization okay if you have such a machine which has all these system requirements then only try to install docker locally i personally have 4 gb of windows machine but i try to use docker locally but it does not works well because 4 gb of ram is not sufficient so your machine will keep on hanging and it will not work well my recommendation will be do not go with local setup unless and until you have at least 8 gigs of ram in a mac you need to have mac version greater than big sur then 4 gb of ram is required here as well in linux also you need to have 64 bits of kernel and you need to have 4 gigs of ram but i don't think all of us who is learning docker will have this high config machines so what is solution for us i personally do not have any high config machine so what is solution for us luckily we have solution and the solution is cloud but again we don't want to spend so what is the free solution so free solution is docker lab so you just have to go on google you just have to search docker lab or you can search docker playground and you will get this website so this is online platform to practice docker commands and the more important is this is free of cost so let me open this website in incognito window because because i'm already logged in and i want to show you how to create account as well so so here i have incognito window and let's try to log in so here it will ask me so here it it is asking me for my username or email address so initially you will not have any email address or username you just have to go and sign up here you will put your username you have to put your email address your password then you will click on sign up if you might remember docker setup first layer is infrastructure layer where we will need actual hardware okay it could be server it could be machine it could be anything but it we will need an hardware on top of the hardware we will need host operating system so in this docker playground case that host operating system is going to be alpine linux okay and on this operating system we will need to install docker engine to work with docker so in this docker playground we do not have to set up anything everything is already set up so that means your docker engine is already installed on docker playground so whenever we will start we will only play with containers and we will play with docker commands all in all we can see we do not have to set up anything okay so let's so let's quickly start new session so if you see here our session is started so in a docker playground every session is of 4 hours make sure whenever you are practicing do not consider this as a permanent solution this is just for the practice purpose as soon as this session get close you will lose your entire data so make sure you will back up your data back up your work manually before you close this session so let's see what all options we have so first is this timer so you need to keep your eyes on this timer timer will come down to 00 your session will automatically get get close okay then you can launch another session and and practice again this close button will help you to close your session if you're done with your practice you can close this session or even if you don't close this session you close this tab this playground will close your session automatically okay then you have this setting button so here we have three options we can create three managers two workers five manager no worker or one manager one worker servers so this is going to be useful in our upcoming videos when we will learn about docker swarm for now let's just close this then there is setting button so this setting button is about keyboard shortcuts which we can use here okay if you have mac operating system you can configure this accordingly but for now i'll keep it as a none okay and then you can also play with 
font size if you want and these are three mostly useful keyboard shortcuts okay so we are going to use this keyboard shortcuts but before that we will need to launch our instance so launching instance is nothing but creating server so let's quickly launch our instance okay and if you see here we got node 1 and then we have this instance id and then we will get ip address automatically allocated we can also see our memory and cpu utilization each instance will have 4 gigs of ram and currently in my case ram utilization is 1% then they also provide ssh login credentials and then if you want to delete this instance you can click on this delete button then we have this editor option so this editor option giving all the file structure which we have inside this launched instance so currently we we have only one folder but if i create another folder let's say demo folder and now if i click on this editor so you will see demo folder is now created and this is nothing but your terminal okay so now let's try to use this keyboard shortcuts and see how it works so in order to toggle terminal on a full screen we will have to press alt enter keyboard shortcuts if i press alt enter now we have full screen terminal okay you can use same keyboard shortcut to exit full screen okay then okay if you want to increase font size you have to press ctrl plus plus so if i press ctrl plus plus i can increase size of font inside the terminal okay i can use ctrl minus minus in order to reduce font size okay so this is the basic introduction of docker playground instance we will simply start our new session so here we go all right so now our session is started you can see the timing here and first thing we need to do here is we need to launch new instance so simply click on this launch new instance button all right so now we have our instance ready so if you remember we already have docker installed in it so we don't need to do any extra setup we can simply start running our docker commands all right so as i already mentioned we are going to use docker run command to run our basic docker container so let's quickly use that command so this is basic docker run command so if i simply ask for help so these are all parameters i can pass to this command so for now we are not going to pass any parameter we will simply use basic command so what i'm going to do here is i will use docker run and then i will use name of image so here i'm going to use hello world image so in case if you are wondering from where this image will get download so this is a docker hub so if you don't know docker hub i will urge you to watch our previous video where we got introduced to docker hub just to quickly explain you what is it so it is online library for all docker images so this is officially supported by docker so by default if you don't provide any server name it will download all the images from this docker hub okay and if that image is not available here it will simply throw error okay so you can read all this information so it is saying it is a largest library and community for the container images so that's what it is so let me click on explore here and this is important thing we need to understand so if i click on images so these are all possible images you can see there are more more than 10000 images available so we can use all these images in our project okay so if i search for hello world so we will get this image here so if you see this this is docker official image all right and this is what we are going to use okay and let's see what is it so it is a basic image which simply put some console messages as soon as it it gets run so let's quickly run this command all right and let me make this screen little bit bigger all right so let's see what happened so as soon as i run this command first of all docker will search this image locally so in our case since we launch our instance right now we do not have any image so that's why locally this image is not available so in the next step what docker did is it started pulling this image 
from docker hub and as we saw docker will pull this image from docker official images okay so this image got downloaded so you can see these logs here and then as soon as it got downloaded next thing happened is our docker run command created container of that downloaded image so this is what we got from that container okay so this message we got from from the container code okay and this is how simple it is so we can simply fetch any image and we can run it so this is how simply docker works okay but my question here is what if i run this command will it still download or will it run locally available image okay so let's try it out let me run it again so now this time what happened so let's say if we compare these two logs in our previous run it downloaded that image but in this case if you observe since the image is locally available because we have already run this command and that image already got downloaded so at this time docker will not download it again unless and until you specify any any specific version of this image so since we have latest image downloaded this docker will not pull any new image it will simply create new instance or new container of that image okay so this is what we got here so we got same message from the container saying hello world and this is how docker works okay so let's try to break down the things and let's try to understand what this run command does first thing run command will do is it will check for this specific image locally if that image locally available then it will simply create new container of that image but if this run command did not found this locally then it will try to download that image from docker hub okay so in this video we will see how to use docker pull command but before that let's try to understand why we will need docker pull command so let's say let's say if we want to pull any image which is available here locally so in that case we will use docker pull command that command will download this image locally okay so let's try to pull nginx okay we will simply use docker pull and we need to mention name of the image so let's say in our case we want to pull nginx we will simply put nginx okay so it will start downloading the new image okay so now we have the image available locally so it is downloaded so now we want to check whether this image is actually downloaded or not so how we can list all the locally available images so there is one more command and the command is docker images so this will list all the images which is already downloaded and available locally so you can see here we have already used react.js so that's why it is there and we have just downloaded this nginx so it is also available here okay and you can check image id you can see the size of this image all right so whenever we use docker pull command and we use docker pull nginx so it will always download latest version of nginx image but what if we want to download any specific version all right so let's say we want to download a previous version so in that case all i need to do is i need to scroll down a little bit and here is the all available versions which we can download okay so let's say i want to download previous version 1.24.0 so in that case i need to mention i need to mention that version here so it will be 1.24.0 now it will start downloading that particular version now if i use docker images command again so you will see i have two different versions of nginx one is 1.24.0 and another one is latest one so this is how we can pull any particular image from the docker hub into our local host machine so now you might be wondering how docker run command is different than docker pull command because both will do same thing docker run command also fetch image from the docker hub and docker pull command also fetch image from the docker hub so what is the difference 
okay so difference is whenever we use docker pull command it will only download image from the docker hub or from the given source okay but when we use docker run command it okay it will not only download that image but it will create container of that image as well so it will basically download and it will run our image so that is the difference between docker run command and docker pull command so docker run command do job of docker pull command internally okay so i hope you have understood this entire concept if you have any questions or queries you can mention that in the comments imagine the situation where you and your team is working on particular project and you have divided task of that project in between your teammates and you have got chance to work on login system okay you have implemented your login logic you have created containers locally and locally everything is working fine and now you want to share your work with your teammates how you going to share your work with your teammates because you have running container locally how you going to share your container with your teammates okay in their machine so that's what we are going to see in this video so in a docker we have import and export command so using that commands we can import new images inside our instance or else we can export our container as a zip file or as a tar file and we can send that tar file with our teammates so that teammate can import that into their machines so this is how it works so let's see this in action so first of all let's quickly launch new instance currently we do not have any container running on this instance so let's quickly run new container so in this case i'm going to use docker run command and i will use hyphen it basically it will open command prompt of our container we have seen this in our previous video and as a demo image i'm going to use ubuntu operating system okay and then i will pass bin bash basically this will help us accessing bash command prompt of our ubuntu operating system okay as soon as i run this first of all it will start downloading the image and now here we have access of command prompt and this command prompt is of our ubuntu image all right let's see what we have in this image so as soon as i put ls we have this folders in here so let me create new folder inside of it i will use mkdir command to create demo folder okay and if i use ls we have this demo folder here which was not here in this case let's create two more folders let's say demo 2 let's say demo 1 and demo 2 all right so here we have a running ubuntu container and we have customized it we have created some folders in it okay so this is what happen in real life and this is what happen in real life scenario as well you will use some base image you will create container of it and you will do some work in it and you want to share your created work with your teammates okay so currently consider the folders that we have created is nothing but the work we have done inside the container and we want to share this work with someone else okay clear up to this point all right moving on so now i want to exit from this container but i want to keep this container running so for that purpose we have one keyboard shortcuts just you just have to press control p and q okay now i have exited container command prompt and now i'm inside of my instance command prompt all right let me clear this first and let's use docker container list command so this command will list all the running containers okay so currently we have one container running and in this container we have some personalized folders in it and now i want to share this work with my teammates so first of all i will need to export this running container as a zip file okay so for that purpose we have one docker command and that command is docker export as a argument you have to pass your container id you don't have to specify this complete container id you just specify some initials okay and make sure this initials is unique amongst all running containers okay and then we will have to pass this right arrow key 
and you'll have to mention name of your zip file so let's say my ubuntu dot zip all right so now we have our ubuntu image exported let's simply put ls command okay so as you can see inside this folder in our running instance we have one zip file this is our customized image so you can share this zip file with your teammates now there are multiple ways of sharing this image you can push this image into dedicated server location from where your teammate will download it another way is you can push this image into your docker hub account and your teammates will use it and one of the easiest way you can simply copy this zip file into your pen drive and you can share that with your teammates okay so currently we cannot do it because we are on docker playground and we don't have any other instance running right now i'm going to mimic this process in this server itself i'm going to import this image inside our current server itself okay so now let's see how your teammate will import it in a similar way we exported our container image we have another command and that command is docker import so simply use docker import command then you, you will have to pass hyphen and then you will have to specify name which you would like to give to this particular image so i'm going to give it the same name if you want you can give it another name well let's use simple name i'm simply going to give it a name my u b then you will have to put left arrow key and then you have to put name of the zip file so in in my case it is my ubuntu dot zip that's pretty much it let's give space all right so this is our complete command if i hit it and let's see available images so currently we have two images this is what we have imported eight seconds ago and this is our first container image all right so now we have image in our local system we can create container of this image okay i'm gonna go ahead and create container of, of this image and let's see if we still have those folders which we have created before exporting our container all right so let's quickly do that so we have docker run command and this is my image name i'm gonna use hyphen it because i want to access shell of this container and i'm gonna use bin bash i have already explained why we do this okay so as soon as i hit this command okay so now currently we are inside of this image container okay and now let's see now let's use ls command all right so as you can see here we have demo folder demo 2 folder demo 1 folder which we have created before exporting our image so in short we can say we have all the work which we did in our container before exporting in this imported container okay so this is how you can share your work with your teammates so i hope you have understood this entire topic thanks for watching In this video, I have decided to use a React image because I thought it will be really helpful if we saw some output on a screen. We will cover some important command line options in this video. So there is a lot to cover in this video. So without any further ado, let's get started. Let me launch our Docker Playground. I'm assuming you are already familiar with this process. So I'm not going to explain what we are doing here. So our session is started. Okay, you can see the closed session option here. So first thing first, we will need to launch new instance. So let's quickly click on this option now our list instance is launched and the next thing we need to do is so here we have decided to use react js image so question is from where we will download it now the answer is again same we need to go we need to go to docker hub and uh, i've already explained what is docker hub in our previous video let's click on this explore option and here we will search if any react js image available so i have already used this react js image so i know this is working but if you know any other image which is working you can go with that as well name of our image okay we will use this name to pull this image from docker hub in our playground okay so how will we pull that so we need to run we need to use docker run command and then we can pass 
or image name so in our case the image name is this so this basic command will pull this image from docker hub and it will create container of that image so if i run this well i think there is some spelling mistake all right so now it started downloading that image and it will create container of that image if you see here now our container is running but we cannot see this output unless and until we open port docker is isolating the entire environment so this image or this react js application is running inside of docker container and if we want to access the react js from outside of the world we will need to make our ports open and that's exactly when our command line option comes into the picture so let me cancel this i will use control c for that and let's see what all command options we can use okay so now now here the help command becomes important so i will use docker and then you, i will use run command now after this i don't know what to do i don't know which options are available so in this case i will simply use help okay so now if you see this let me quickly make it bigger so this is the list of all command line options which we can use for run command let me run it once again okay so this is the list okay so in this video we will cover some of them first thing first we need to open port now what is this remember whenever we run react js application so at that time react js runs on particular port number generally it is 3000 but some applications runs on port number 80 but in our case since we run our container that port number is available inside the container but what if we want to access that port number outside of the world so in that case we need to pass our port open some ports inside the containers and it will make that ports available to access from outside of the world okay so i know this image which we are using to run our container it is using port number 80 internally so what i will do is so i will write command like this because i've used this image previously as well so i know this is running on port number 80 but if you have used your image which is using port number 3000 so you need to mention 3000 port number here okay so that is our second port number the first port number is nothing but the port number of our machine which we want to attach with this port number okay so now i've used same port number so it will be confusing i can mention anything here but the condition is this port number has to be available in our machine okay the machine is nothing but this machine on which we are running our docker okay so if i run this command and let me exit from the full screen let's wait until this runs completely well generally it shows up here but i don't know why it is not showing up so i can click here and i can manually open port number of our host machine so i need to open port number 8080 all right and if i click on ok hopefully we'll be able to see react js application and here we go so this is basic react js application you can make notes hello world and you can add it so this is basically to do list you can call it anything well that's not important important is we were able to run our docker react js image and we were able to open port number so that we can access that running container its output from outside of the world so this is the browser window if i open new browser window i can access from there as well okay so this is not running locally so that's what i wanted to highlight so basically the command that we have used docker run hyphen p so this is nothing but options we can pass to this run command and always remember this format we will use docker and some operation and then then we will pass some options yeah, and then you need to mention your image name so this is how it works so great we have covered our first command line option so let's see another command line option which is nothing but memory so now if you remember we can assign memory limits to our container okay so this is one of the advantage of using docker container because 
imagine you have one host machine which has 4 GB of RAM and you want to run multiple containers on it. If any container is using more RAM, let's say 3 GB of RAM and other three containers will also need some RAM. So in that case, just because of one container is consuming a lot of resources, other containers will not be able to work because of less memory availability. So how to handle these situations? So that is the reason why we mention memory limits. Okay. So we decided, okay, a React JS application should only consume one GB of RAM. And we know that one GB of RAM is sufficient. So in that case, we already know how much RAM we want to allocate so that the RAM will be available for other containers as well. Okay, so let's see how we can use this option. So it's not hard, just like we did it for port number, we need to use hyphen M and then we need to mention RAM amount. Okay, so now let's see the magic here. So I know so I know React JS application is going to consume certainly more RAM than 7 MB, but still I'm going to assign 7 MB just to show you how it works. Okay. Initially, we did not face any issue because there was no memory limits assigned. So by default, Docker do not assign any limits. Okay. By default, if any Docker container is expecting 4 GB of RAM, Docker will assign that 4 GB of RAM to that container if you don't specify memory limits. Okay, so now in this case, I will assign 7 MB to this ReactJS application and let's see how it beha behaves. Okay, let me quickly run it. Alright, so you can see here our application is already started throwing some errors. You can see it is continuously logging some issues. So I will open port number 8080 again and let me quickly launch it. So now if, if you see, this is not loading just because our image failed. And this is how we can assign memory limits to running containers. Now, let me run this command one more time. And in this case, I will assign some random number, but definitely more than sufficient and let's try to access port number 8080 now. So hopefully this will work at this time. So you see, now it just started working again. So this is how we can define how much memory any container can consume. Let's move on to the next command line option, which is nothing but detached. Now, by this time, you might have observed whenever I run command, my terminal remains occupied. I cannot access other things while my container is running. So this is not good because we might want to monitor something. We might want to run a few more images. So in that case, how we can access our command line. Okay. So we want to keep this container running and we still want to access our terminal because if I close this, I cannot access my website. So how we can handle this? And the answer is detach option. So this detached option, it helps to run our container in the background. So we don't have to do anything. We just have to pass hyphen D and this will keep our container running in the back. And if I try to access my website, you can see I can still access and I have terminal free so that I can launch another instance. I can do, I can run another Docker command. And in this video, we will see how to access command prompt of a running container okay so yes our container also has command prompt and it's really important to understand how to access command prompt of our container imagine you want to deploy your web application inside the container and imagine your front end is made up of react js and you have used node.js to create your backend apis so in order to run your backend server and react js inside the container first thing you will need is container of either ubuntu or fedora or any other linux system so because that is the basic requirement let's say you have choose ubuntu image and once you have that image you have created container and now you want to install node.js because that is the dependency you will require before you run start commands okay so how will you install that dependency and that's exactly when we will need access to the command prompt of container. 
So once you have access to the command prompt of the container, you can simply go inside that terminal. You can type npm install. You can you can run installation commands. So that command will basically install Node.js inside your container, and then you can start your Node.js server and React.js server. Right? So this is how it works. So I hope you have understood the use case of accessing command prompt of the container. All right. So in this video, we will see how to do that. Okay, so there are two, three ways we will see all of them. So let's get started. So as you can see, the black window you see in front of us is nothing but command prompt or shell of our launched instance. So this is our launched instance. You can see the IP address of that launched instance as well. And, and instead of it, we write different commands. Okay, so that Docker commands. So in the same way, we can access command prompt of our container as well. But before that, we will need to create container. So for this example, I'm going to use Nginx image. So this is Nginx is basically a web server. And this is one of the popular image in Docker Hub to play with. So let's simply fetch this image locally first. Okay, and how and how are we going to fetch this image? Well, we have one command docker pull command we saw this in our previous video and we just have to pass name of the image which we want to fetch from docker hub all right so if i hit enter it will fetch the image locally okay so let me make this terminal bigger i will use alt enter and let me make font size a little bit bigger i will use control plus plus Okay, so now we have pretty big font. All right, it will fetch that image from the Docker Hub into our local running instance. Okay, so let's list out all the locally available images. So there is one command local, there is one command Docker images. And this command will basically list out all the locally available images. So currently we have only one image, which is Nginx. All right, so now this is good so now let's create container of that local image so we have run command and this run command will create container of our run nginx image okay if i run this command as it is i will not be able to access command prompt of nginx okay so for that purpose i will have to for that purpose i will have to pass command line options so what is that options so after run and before image name, I will have to pass hyphen it hyphen it. And then after Nginx, I will have to simply pass bash. What is bash? Bash is again, you can compare bash with the terminal, but it is basically a command prompt. It's a command line. Okay. You can run commands inside of it so this is the complete command so let's quickly run this command and see what happens okay so now if you observe earlier we were here we were accessing command prompt or command line of our launched instance but now in here if you see we have a root at the rate some random number so this is nothing but command prompt of our nginx container okay and if i use some commands let's say ls this will show me what we have inside our docker container okay and in here i can create new folder let's try to do that and if i list so you can see we have new folder here so basically we can run commands we can create folders files and whatever we normally do inside any specific image we can we can run those commands in here all right so this is the first way through which we can access command prompt of command prompt of the container but if you observe we saw example of launching container with command prompt options okay what if our container is already running and we want to access command prompt of that container so let's try that as well so first of all let's list out all the containers running locally so for that we have command docker container list so currently we do not have any container running because we have closed this container okay 
and there is no more container running so first of all launch new container so we will use again docker run command and i and this time i will simply pass detached flag so what this detached flag will do we have already saw this so basically it will run our container in detached mode so if i run this so now we have command prompt access as well and if i list out all the containers which is running so i can see there is one container now okay and this is the container id all right so let me clear this out all right so this is our container which is running all right so now here we have the situation where our container is already running and we want to access terminal of our running container so we have one specific command for that and that command is nothing but exec command so simply type docker exec all right and then we'll have to pass flag again and lastly we'll have to pass name of the container so it's going to be 7c65162 double 3 fa3 all right well i have some typos here it should be ex ec all right and now if i run this now if, if you can see here we have access to the terminal so let me clear this and then let me show you once again all right so we have this command if i run this now we have terminal access all right so this is another way of accessing terminal all right so we just saw how to access terminal of our running container and how to launch container with the terminal access so i think that's it for this video thank you very much for watching see you in the next video bye This video is going to be really really interesting because in this video we will see how we can connect our docker instance terminal with our local windows cmd and we are going to use ssh protocol for that so let's see how we can do that but before that let's try to understand which problem statement we are trying to solve okay so let me explain you what is problem with our cloud terminal then we will try to understand how we can solve this okay so i'm gonna go into docker playground and i will launch new instance so here we have our docker instance and this is our docker instance cloud terminal all right we have seen this multiple times and it works fine okay unless and until you want to copy something in this terminal let's say there is one command okay command could be anything let's say i'll try to copy this and i will try to paste it if i try to paste it if you see here these are normal default browser options there is no option to paste my command okay so this is the problem that i am facing quite often and going forward if we want to work with docker we will have to copy multiple files multiple files path then then we have to copy multiple commands so in that case we will need copy paste feature because it will suddenly save a lot of time and that's the reason why we want to access this terminal using our normal windows cmd so that we can copy paste our commands well i'm pretty sure there will be many more other use cases of doing that but for now i can remember only this so here we have our ssh key okay so whatever the necessary things we need to connect our local terminal with our cloud terminal we already have it here okay so i thought let's connect and if i summarize our problem statement so just remember we want to copy some commands inside our cloud terminal but we cannot do that that is the reason we will connect our local windows cmd with our cloud terminal so that we can copy paste our commands locally okay i hope you have understood what we are trying to do here okay so now the bigger question might be in your mind what is ssh if you don't know anything about ssh or never heard this word before so i will suggest you 
do not look into this because it's going to be a complete different topic and it will take a lot of time to understand how this work and what is public private key and what is secured shell i will not recommend you to understand ssh completely just remember ssh is a magical way which connects our local terminal with our cloud terminal i will try to explain ssh in a brief the full form of ssh is secured shell and ssh is a protocol so like we have http https tcp etc etc protocols in the same way ssh is one of the protocol that we normally use to connect or enable communication between two different computers okay ideally we use ssh to connect our cloud with our local terminal so that we can communicate with our cloud easily and that's what we are trying to do in our case as well and as we already discussed ssh helps us to connect our local terminal with the remote server terminal okay so i think that's enough for the introduction of ssh all right so once we are clear with why we want to do it and what we want to do it now the next appropriate question is how we going to do it so here is this way there are two steps so let me explain you one by one okay so here they have mentioned our server host so this is our ssh host well let me show you what happens if i directly copy paste this command in our local terminal so let me open command prompt so here we have our local windows pc command prompt and if i paste this command and if i run it it will throw some error let's wait for a while okay so now here you can see it is saying permission denied and this is all because ssh works on public private key so in our local host in our local terminal we need to provide our public key so in that case if you don't have your public key you need to generate it and this is what exactly mentioned here this ssh keygen command will generate public key for you so i'll type ssh keygen okay and it will ask me couple of questions regarding what will be the name of this key file so i will say let's say demo1 okay and then it will ask me passphrase if you want to add any password you can add it but i will keep it empty and i'll click on enter then it will ask for the password confirmation so i will press it again and then we have our key generated if you see this demo1.pub file this is our public key once we have this public key we can try to establish connection with our server terminal so the command is ssh hyphen i and we need to provide name of our key file so in our case it is demo1 all right and then we need to copy the host name so you don't have to copy the entire command because we have already typed ssh so copy from this up to the end and then i'll simply paste it here if i click enter let's wait for a while okay now if you see now i'm inside this host so i have connected to our instance so if you see here if you see here we have 192.168.0.8 and this is exactly what we have here locally so technically i am inside terminal of our launched instance now if i type ls currently we don't have anything in this folder so let's create new directory let's say demo okay and if i type ls we have one directory now now if i do the same thing in our cloud terminal here also we can see the demo folder is available okay whatever the command we used to write and execute in this cloud terminal now all those commands we can run it here okay and it will work same but the benefit that we were discussing is now we can copy paste commands uh, let's say if i want to copy paste this address i cannot do it here but if i try to do the same thing here let me copy once again now i can paste it here this is the additional benefit of using your local windows terminal instead of using your cloud terminal so in this video we will discuss about storage in docker okay so let's get started 
So by default, Docker store all its files inside the writable layer. Okay, so let me try to explain you with one example. So let's imagine this is your container. Okay, and you have created this container by using XYZ image. And as we already discussed, Docker always follows layered architecture. So the first layer will be your base image. Okay, so let's say you have used Node.js base, base image and on the top of it, you have installed new dependencies and you have created one binary that is nothing but your Docker image. Okay, and you have created container using that binary. Okay, so this is your running container. So in a running container, sometimes we need to install extra dependencies. For example, inside Ubuntu container, let's say you want to install wget. Okay, so you will use apt get install wget command and you will get that installed. Okay, also sometimes you need to create few files. So let's say for your project, you want to create some config file or even some text files. Let's say you want to create one txt file uh, inside your container. So you can do that also. Okay, but all that file and dependencies that you are installing will get stored will get stored inside the writable layer of that container. Okay, so now you might be wondering what is this writable layer. So let me change colors. So you have to focus on this writable layer. So writable layer is nothing but a layer on the top of container. So we are discussing about layer architecture by the way. So this layer gets attached on the top of the container. So whatever the files folders or even dependencies you want to install in the container gets stored inside that writable layer and this writable layer gets stored inside your host along with your container okay so wherever your container data is stored or from where your container is started there itself this writable layer gets stored and it, it will get stored inside the host okay now Everything is fine up to this point. We want to create file, be able to create file. We want to install dependencies, be able to install dependencies. Everything is working fine. At, everything is working fine at the moment. Now, what is the problem? Now, the problem comes when you want to share this text file. Okay. Problem comes when you want to share the dependencies. Okay. You want to share folders. So the problem with writable layer is you cannot share this data directly with any other container okay in production you will need to share data between multiple containers okay but by using this writable layer you cannot directly share that data with any other container okay so that's the problem with this writable layer since this data is tightly coupled with the container itself it is very hard to access from the outside another disadvantage of using writable layer is as soon as you close your container your writable layer data will also get lost okay and you cannot retrieve it even if you restart your container you cannot retrieve your previous data because this is more like okay this is more like random access memory as soon as you shut down your pc in this case as soon as you shut down your container your data will get lost so that's the disadvantage of using writable layer Although it can be useful in some cases, but for the permanent storage, if you are looking for permanent storage, writable layer is certainly not good option. So luckily we have different options. We will discuss that in our upcoming videos, but just to give you a heads up, there are three different types of storage Docker provides. First is your bind mount. Another is your volume. And then there is TMPF. Okay. So we will see this in our upcoming videos and, and we will also understand difference between all these three options but for now you just have to understand why do we need storage in a docker i'm assuming you are pretty clear with this concept it is simple by default docker provides you writable layer to use and store your files and folders but this storage is not permanent this is more like random access memory. So as soon as you close your container, your data will get lost. So that's the reason if we want to store our data permanently. And in fact, moreover, 
we want to share that stored data with other containers then we will need some other solution okay what what is that solution we will discuss that in our upcoming videos okay so in this video we will discuss about bind mount okay in our previous video we discussed about writable layer of the container where we discussed if this is our container writable layer gets attached on top of it okay so we can create new file we can create new directory we can even install new dependencies on this writable layer okay so this is good but the problem with this writable layer is this is not persistent data type that means if we want to store this data permanently we cannot do that in writable layer if we close our container or for some reason our container got closed automatically this writable layer data will also get deleted okay so we cannot retrieve this data once it got deleted okay so that's the reason why we need permanent solution permanent storage okay so we want even if our container is not running we still want to preserve our data okay and we also want to share same data with another container okay so let's say if this is another container this is container c1 this is container c2 and this container will also have writable layer okay but the problem with this writable layer is we cannot share container one writable layer data with container two writable layer directly uh, it is very hard to retrieve data from writable layer because this gets append with the container in your host machine storage so tightly so it will be so it becomes really hard to retrieve data from writable layer forget about sharing data it's not possible okay so we need some solid solution and luckily we have a solution in docker docker basically provides two three different types of storage we will see that one by one so currently we are discussing about bind mount okay so so the way bind mount works is again imagine this is your container this is writable layer of the container so this is your container let's say this is container c1 and this is your host machine on which you have hosted your container okay you have created your container so this is your host machine all right so the bind mount says you create one folder inside your host machine so let's say this is our file structure this is the root folder in linux machine normally root folder exist so let's say this is host machine created using linux operating system okay so this is root folder what we will do is we will create our custom folder i said demo folder okay i will simply use mkdir command and i'll create this demo folder okay now bind mount says bind this folder which is in your host machine into your container okay so inside the container you can bind this demo folder with the folder that exists in the container so let's say container also has a root folder container can have different file structure but we are assuming okay container also has root folder inside the container let's say i want to assign or i want to bind this demo folder with test folder so we can do that okay so the way bind mount work is we have one folder inside our host machine and we bind or you can say we share this folder with a test folder which is inside the container so whenever we will create new file inside this demo folder this test folder will also be available inside this demo folder so basically you can say these two folders although they have different names you can keep same name as well but although they have say different names but you can say this is same storage okay so so whatever you will create inside this uh, test folder will be available in the demo folder and vice versa if you create anything inside the demo folder will be available in this test folder okay so this solves all the problems even if we delete this container still this demo folder will be there in the host machine which we can later on act, which we can later on assign to another container okay so let's assume we were trying to solve two problems first problem was writable layer data we were not able to share directly so 
using this approach using bind mount approach we can directly do that okay we can assign this demo folder to c1 container and if this is container 2 we can assign this demo folder to one of the folder inside the container 2 with this way we can even share data between two containers okay and even if these two containers got deleted our data is still there that means we are still preserving our data okay i hope you understood this entire concept concept is really really simple we will create one folder inside our host machine and we will bind that folder into our container so that our data inside that inside that particular folder will be preserved okay so let's see this in action let me go back to our playground let me create new instance okay our instance is ready now in here we'll have to create new folder so as per this definition we have to create one folder inside our host first if you don't create this folder command will throw error okay but if this test folder which is inside the container one does not exist command will automatically create it so let's see this in action so currently let's say let me create one folder i'll give it a name demo so we have created one demo folder inside our host machine so if you want to check i'll show you so we have this demo folder here let me clear this terminal and now what we will do is we will use docker run command because we are trying to launch one container and we will try to bind our demo folder with that container okay so command will be docker run and i have planned to run ubuntu container so i'll give name to this container let's say test one okay and i want interactive terminal that's why hyphen it is to be there and this is our mount okay so mount option works with comma separated value okay we can provide multiple values in mount and we can separate it out by comma okay so first thing we need to pass is source so in our case source will be demo folder which is inside my present working directory so i'll simply write pwd and demo okay so in your case if it is another folder inside the demo you will write that folder name here okay so this is really simple then you have to press comma and you have to give target target is nothing but the folder which we want to bind with this demo folder okay so this target folder will be the folder name which is inside the container currently container does not exist still we can provide one name let's say test one okay and as i already mentioned if this folder does not exist in inside the container this command will automatically create that folder okay so you so you don't have to worry about that okay third parameter inside the mount parameter we want to pass type so our mount type will be bind okay so this is bind mount that's why type is bind okay and then i think that's it we need to give name of our image so our na image name will be ubuntu 14.04 and i will use bash because i want to access terminal of this container okay okay i think that's pretty much it let's run this command all right so now you can see our container got created and we are now inside the container terminal okay now if i simply press ls so you will see the test folder already got created okay let me change folder to test folder and i will create some files so let's say let's create demo.txt wait command is toch all right so if you see we have created demo.txt inside our test folder which is bind with our demo folder in our host machine okay now let's create new directory let's say test dir okay so test directory is also here okay you can install new dependencies inside this folder you can keep your so source code files in this folder you can do pretty much anything i'm just demoing you what is possible 
okay so we have created one folder and we have one file inside our test inside our test one folder okay so now i want to exit this terminal which is container terminal so i'll simply press control p and q let me press it once again okay now i'm outside of the container terminal now i'm inside the host terminal okay so if i press ls we have this demo folder here let me clear the terminal okay now we will change our folder with the demo folder and now if i press ls we will see all that files which we have created inside test one folder so in short our demo folder is bind with our container test folder so that whatever the content that we will create inside either demo folder or at the either test one folder will be available in both folders okay now let's see what happens if i delete that container because our aim is to keep this data preserved even if we delete container okay so first of all let's list out all the available containers okay so we have one container and i will try to delete this container so before that i'll have to stop this container i'll use docker stop 77ff okay now if we see container is not running but still we need to delete it docker remove 77ff all right so we successfully able to stop the container and we able to delete the container and now if we see inside our demo folder we can still see data is still there so that means our container is not running still we have our data okay i hope you have understood this entire concept of bind mount if you have any questions or queries ask me in the comment in this video we will discuss about volumes in docker okay so let's get started so as we already discussed in our previous video we discussed about bind mount so the way bind mount works is so for example this is our container this is our host machine so we used to create folder manually so we took an example of a root and demo folder like this so we earlier we were creating this demo folder manually and then we were assigning that folder to this container but with the help of volumes now we don't have to create folder manually it will get created automatically at pre decided path depends on which operating system we have used in our host machine okay for windows the volume location will be different for linux volume location will be different if you understood this concept carefully the purpose of docker is you can use docker and run it on any platform okay but with the help of bind mounts we need this folder before we create container okay so let's say this path is valid in a linux host machine so this path will be valid in all the linux host machine but not necessarily it will be valid in windows as well okay for windows file system will be different so there has to be some way through which we can manage this path okay this manual path that we were creating there has to be some automated way and that's exactly what volumes offer okay another advantage of this approach is let's say you want to port this folder into another machine okay let's say now you have created another host we will say this as a host 2 and this is running on windows operating system and our current host is running on linux operating system so if you want to share this bind mount into the host machine with the help of volumes we can easily manage sharing of um, volumes and we don't even have to care about where it will get stored because docker internally manages its path okay so in windows it will get stored in default path okay so this is an advantage over bind mounts if you use volumes okay so we can say volume is more advanced version of bind mounts it works in a similar manner we create folders inside our host but that folder we don't create manually it will get create by docker command itself okay another advantage is let's say if we don't create this folder 
in in bind mount case before we create container then it will throw error you can try that as well if don't create demo folder and try to assign this demo folder using bind mount to this container and command will throw error but in case of volumes if folder does not exist in your host machine it will create it first then it will assign it automatically okay and there are a few more benefits like like volumes can be easily backup also using volumes we can pre-populate some values inside the volumes which we cannot do in bind mounts okay also we can host this volume on different server we have created another server this is separate server just dedicated to store our data okay and we can create volumes over here and we can assign it that to our container so in short volumes does not necessarily has to be present in our host machine it can be present in separate host okay and this becomes really important because sometimes volume size can increase heavily which we cannot afford to keep it in our host machine for that purpose we need to shift that into separate server okay so this is the overview of volumes i hope you have understood volumes volumes are pretty similar to bind mount it's just that it brings new features on the table okay so let's get started with the volumes here uh, i'm in my playground let me create new instance all right now let's increase its font size first all right okay so this is fresh server you if you if i show you currently there is no directory and nothing okay so first of all let's understand how we can list all available volumes okay so for that there is one command docker volume ls and if you see here there is no volume available here okay so first of all let's create new volume so the command will be docker volume create and we have to give name of volume so i'll give it as a my vol okay so this is my volume okay it is created now let's list again so you can see this my volume is now created okay let me clear this terminal first okay so this is our volume which is our custom volume okay let let's inspect this and let's see where actually this volume got created so after inspection you see you'll see the mount point is this okay that means inside your host there is a var folder inside lib there is a docker folder and then there is a volumes folder so this path is decided by docker itself we haven't created this folder manually so that's the advantage of using doc we don't have to think about path if we use windows operating system this path will be different okay so since we have volume created now let's try to create one container of ubuntu operating system and let's try to mount this volume which is my wall into that container and let's see how it works so first of all let me quickly go ahead and create one container I'll give this container name as test1 and I will use hyphen it because I want to interact with the terminal of my my container and then we will use mount okay so now here you will find some basic syntax change earlier we were using src but now at this time we will use source and source will be the name of our volume so we have created volume name with my wall so i'll put that here and then we will have to specify target target is as usual this is a folder that that will get bind with our my volume folder okay so folder will be let's say test one okay and i think that's pretty much it we just have to specify name of the image that we are going to use so name of the image will be 14.04 ubuntu and i want to interact with the bash terminal okay and that's pretty much it let me okay all right so there is one problem instead of colon there should be dot okay so let's create our container okay so now we are inside our container terminal now let's list out all the available folders and if you see we got this test one folder 
so i'll switch my folder directory and then i will create one folder with name demo and i will create let's say two files test1.txt and let's say test2.txt okay so now if you see inside this folder we have one folder demo we have one file test1.txt we have another file tech test2.txt okay so we have created this file inside the test1 folder which is bind with our volume so now let me go back to my host machine terminal so for that purpose i will use control pq and let me clear this terminal now let me first of all list all the volumes that are available okay and now let me quickly inspect this my volume okay now if you see the folder location of this volume is this so let me quickly go ahead and copy this location using control insert and then i'll go back and paste it using shift insert okay now we are inside of our volume folder now let's see so you will observe we have same folders and files that we have created inside our container test one folder okay so this works pretty much same as bind mount the only difference is the way we create this folders okay in bind mounts we create the folder that we want to mount manually but in case of volumes docker takes care of creating folders okay now even if i delete this container now let's imagine currently i have only my vol created as a volume okay now what if i specify another name let's say my vol underscore test what will happen what do you think it is expected that docker itself will create my underscore volume dot test and it will assign it to this container okay so let's test that as well let me change name of my container as a test2 and let's run it okay so now we are inside the terminal and since this is a new volume this will be empty for now let's create new file demo dd okay and also let me create some file test.txt all right so we have one folder and we have one file inside our newly created volume uh, inside our test one folder okay now let's see what happens if we check this volume okay let me go back into a host terminal let me clear the terminal first all right now if i use docker volume ls here you will observe my vol dot test will get created automatically okay so this is an advantage of using volume over the bound bind mounts if we go even further and if i inspect this my vol test here you will observe our data volume is created here let me copy this and let's switch our folder to this location all right now if i press ls here you will see we have one folder and we have one file inside this folder okay so all in all we can say bind mount and volumes are pretty much same thing but docker encourage you to use volume because it has some advanced features which certainly helps us so i hope you have understood this entire concept as well so in this video we will create our first ever docker file and we will build image from that docker file so it's going to be pretty simple and short video and in this video you will understand role of docker file and how we create an image from that docker file we've seen in our previous video docker file is simple text file it's really simple we need to write one command touch and this touch command we use in linux operating system so often in order to create any file so if you want to create text file you can use this command if you want to create let's say dot sh file you can use this command i mean basically in order to create any file you can use this command one more thing you can create your docker file anywhere let's say i have decided i have decided i will create another directory and i will create my project inside that directory 
we can do that as well so let me create one more directory let's say demo app okay let me switch into that directory okay now i'm inside of this folder now here i can create my docker file okay so you can create your docker file inside the root directory as well as inside any specific folder okay so now let's quickly create our docker file so as i explain you we use touch command and then we specify name of the file so name of the file will be docker file itself so you don't have to mention any extension here you don't need to change this file name well i will recommend to keep your file name docker file itself well there is a way you can customize this name but but then when whenever you will create your docker image you need to specify that name in short the simple process will become complicated so since we are just starting don't use any other name just use this default name okay now we have our docker file created so let's use ls command okay now the next question is how to access this file well we can do that through our command prompt but i will teach you another simplest way but first of all let's see how to use this file with our terminal itself all right so we have this docker file here the way we can access it is through command prompt as well and i will teach you another way to access this file but first of all let's see how we can access this through our command prompt so we just have to type vi and then name of our file so vi docker file and then we will enter inside our file okay so if you want to edit your file you need to press i button and this will and this will change its mode with insert mode okay and once you're done with editing your file you need to press escape colon wq and then you need to press enter again so this will save your file and then you can create build of that file but i will teach you another way which is really simple way to edit your file so editor button you see here we can access that and as soon as we enter into our editor mode we will see all the files and folders that we have here okay so we have our docker file inside this docker inside this demo app folder so we can click on this file and now here we have our docker file okay we can edit our file from here okay so as you can see we have our previous saved messages okay so this is how we can access our file the next thing we need to understand is how this docker file works so i hope you have understood how we create docker file and how we edit this file now let's insert some commands inside our docker file and let's try to create image of that file okay so so i'm going to create simple docker file so every docker file you will see it will start with this from tag okay and this from tag will mention the base image name okay so in our case let's say we want to create ubuntu image so in that case we need to mention ubuntu and the version of ubuntu so i'm going to use latest so i will say latest okay that's it save this and you need to come back into your terminal again okay let me clear this terminal all right so in order to create build of our docker file we need to we need to run one command but remember you need to run this command inside that folder in which you have your docker file so currently we are inside demo app so we are good but if you if but if your terminal is in different folder you need to switch to that path first then you can run uh, your build command so build command is really simple docker we need to type docker build and just simply type dot so dot will okay this dot will indicate nothing but your current working directory in which you have your docker file so let's say if you have another folder inside inside this demo app folder and in which you have your docker file so you need to specify name of that folder so this is how the build command will work okay we can see now our command started working
now the command inside the docker file started working and you can see here our build is work completely fine and this is our image id and if we use our docker images command which will list all the images available locally if you see here we have our new image in this video we'll learn how to create docker file how to edit docker file and how to create build from the docker file okay let's quickly recap this in order to create docker file we can use touch command so there is one command touch and you need to specify your docker file name okay like this and then you need to run this command which will create docker file and you can use this editor which is really nice feature of your playground you can use this editor to edit your docker file and inside the docker file you can mention your commands okay so like in our case we have mentioned our first line of code and once we save this we need to run our build command we saw this here this is simplest build command and once you run this build command you will get your image created okay so this is how simple it is i hope you understood this entire concept in this video we will see how to use copy instruction in our docker file so generally we want to add our custom files so let's say if you want to copy any specific file into your docker image from your host machine so we will need copy instruction or else if you want to copy any specific folder or let's say you want to copy your source code into your docker image then you will need this copy instruction all right so let's see how we can use it so let's quickly launch new instance so first thing here we need to do is we need to create new docker file so i'll simply use touch command then i will specify docker file name and if i use ls command so here you can see we have this docker file now i will exit full screen and i will go into editor and here i will browse this docker file what i'm planning here is i will use ubuntu image and i will copy some customized file inside that ubuntu os inside that ubuntu image okay so i will specify from as you already saw in order to specify your base image you will have to use this from then i'm as i mentioned i'm going to use ubuntu image i'm going to use ubuntu image so i will specify ubuntu and then you will have to specify version of this image so i'm going to use latest so i will specify latest okay and in the next line i will use our copy instructions so this is really simple you will need to use copy then you will need to specify your source and then you will need to specify your destination so in our case source will be our current directory let's say i want to copy my source code so in that case i will need my source code in here so let's quickly close this and we don't have any source code as of now so i'm gonna create some random folders so let's create that so i will use app and inside this and inside this folder i will create some random source files so let's say server dot js and then i will use index dot js i think that's enough then i will switch my folder back to root directory and again open my docker file and then inside of it so our source will be this app folder which is in here and i will use a dot slash for this and then our destination will be just dot because so if we just specify this dot then the app folder or its content will get copied in our root directory of ubuntu root directory of ubuntu container and if you want to specify let's say any specific directory let's say user then your folder name then you can do that as well but just for the sake of simplicity i'm using i'm just for the sake of simplicity i'm copying it into the root folder okay 
so that's it we need to save this file and as usual we need to create build from this docker file so you know this command already we need to use docker build command then we need to give tag to this tag to this image so i will use demo one again and then i will need to specify the directory so since we have our docker file in the current directory itself i will use simple dot then I, if i hit enter now it started downloading our ubuntu image copied you can see it here our app folder got copied in our ubuntu image now let's check that let me clear this and let's first of all let's check how many images we have locally available so i will simply use docker images and if you can see here we have this demo one and let's create container of this image in order to check whether those files actually exist in the container or not okay so i'm going to use docker run command and then i will use hyphen it because we want to because we want to open terminal of our container and then we need to specify an image name so in our case it is demo one and then we need to specify bin bash i have already explained you why we use it because we want to open terminal of our ubuntu image if i hit enter now we are inside our ubuntu docker container now if i use ls if you can see here we have this index.js and server.js folder so this is how our copy instruction work generally we use our copy instructions in order to copy any file folder or assets or anything that you want to copy inside your docker image I hello welcome all welcome in another important video i hope you all are doing great in our previous video we discussed about copy instruction in our docker file where we saw how copy instruction help us copying our source code inside our docker image so in this video we will understand how to use add instructions okay so add instructions is something similar to copy instructions but it's just that we get some additional benefit with add instruction okay we will see we will see those additional benefits okay so let's get started so first of all we will need our docker file i will use touch command and i will create docker file okay then i will use this editor so as we already discussed first line will be your base image so i'm gonna use ubuntu docker image and its latest version okay and the second line i will mention add instruction so let's see how add instruction is different than the copy instructions okay so we saw copy instruction copies file from your host machine okay so let's say you have source code in your host machine then only you can use this copy instruction but what if you have your code somewhere hosted on the internet and you want to copy that zip file into your docker image okay so in that case you can use add instruction so add instruction has additional benefit if you specify any link to zip file or tar file so add instruction can automatically download that tar file for you which copy instructions cannot do copy instructions will only work if you have your source code your files inside the host machine okay so that is the benefit we get if we use add instruction so let's see how it works so add instruction syntax is similar to copy instruction the first parameter we pass is source and the second parameter we pass destination where we want to download that zip file okay so since we don't have any zip file right now i'll go on internet and i will search for demo node.js project and i will use this github you can see here they have given some releases so in this releases if i go and uh, let's say here you can see we have our source code in a zip format so what i will do here is i will use this zip file copy its link address 
and we'll go back here I'll open editor and then I'll paste this link then I as a first parameter I'll paste this link and as usual we pass second parameter as a simple dot because we want to copy or download this file inside the root directory itself we don't care about it okay so I think that's pretty much it we need to save this file and in order to check whether this file will get download or not we'll need to create we'll need to build image of that docker file so let's use docker build command let me increase font size so let's use docker build command and I will give tag to this image let's say demo1 and I just need to and I just need to mention current directory okay so as soon as I run this it will start downloading Ubuntu image as you can see here our image built successfully now let's create container of this image so I will use and I will use docker images command just to see whether the image is created or not so as you can see we have two images Ubuntu image the one which we have downloaded and the doc and the demo one is the one which we have created okay so let's do one thing so let's use docker run command and let's create container of this demo one image so I will use hyphen it options in order to in order to access command prompt of our running container and then we will need to specify our image name and I will use bin bash because we want to access command prompt and if I hit enter now it will create container great as you can see we have as you can see now we are inside our docker container now if I use ls command so here you can see we got this 4.9.7 zip file this means we have provided link to this zip file inside the add command and add command simply download that zip file so this is a main difference between copy and add instruction add instructions allows us to download this add instruction allows us to download zip file or source file from the internet but copy instructions do not allow us to do that okay In this video, let's try to understand use case of run instruction in our docker file. Alright, so run instruction basically allows us to run commands inside our docker image. Let's say if you want to install some dependencies before you launch your docker container, then in that case also you can take a help of run command and you can install dependencies. So the basic use case of run command is to run commands inside your docker image okay so let's let's see this in action so first of all we will need to mention our base image so let's use ubuntu image for now so let's imagine you have created some node.js project and now you want to run that project in a docker container so how you can do this first of all you will need your base image so let's say you have choose to use ubuntu image itself okay now in order to run your node.js code in your docker container first dependency you will need to resolve is node.js itself you will need to install node.js inside your ubuntu image okay so how you gonna install it and that's exactly when run command becomes helpful so as we already saw and as i already mentioned run command basically allows us to run commands inside our base image so simply we can we can mention this run command and first of all we will need to update our ubuntu image so in that case the command will be apt get update and then we will need to mention another instruction saying apt get install node.js and we will need to mention hyphen y in order to bypass all yes or no instructions okay just these two lines will install our node.js dependency in our ubuntu image so if we build image from this docker file we will get node.js installed by default so this is really useful because now you don't need to worry about the dependencies 
in order to run your project okay this is the advantage of using run command another property is you can mention as many run commands you want okay but each command is creating each run command will create a new layer in your docker image we will see this in a moment but let's just save this file let's go back now let's try to create image of this docker file so so we have already seen this command we'll need to use build command then i will give it a tag let's say image one and then i'll simply pass dot because our docker file is in current directory itself well there is some spelling mistakes let's improve this now you see here it is started installing node.js now as you can see here build process successfully completed now if i scroll it little bit up so let's see what happened here so as soon as i run this build command first thing it happened as usual it will download ubuntu latest image from the docker hub and then the next thing it did okay it updated downloaded ubuntu image now the next thing happened it started installing node.js okay so all three instructions which we have provided in our docker file is now fulfilled so now let's see so let me clear this terminal now let's see what all images we have locally available so as you can see we have two images first is our ubuntu image which is downloaded from docker hub and the next image which is our custom image in which we will have node.js install you can clearly see the size difference between these two images this image which is created by us has more size because we have some dependencies installed in it okay so let's see do we actually have this dependency installed or not in order to in order to check this we will need to run this docker image and we will need to con create container of it so i will use docker run command and i will use hyphen it in order to access terminal of this image and then i will provide name of the image and then simply mention bin bash okay so now we are inside of the docker container node hyphen v well as you can see here we have version 12.22.9 is installed in in this image so this is how we can install dependencies using run command okay i want to show you one more thing so let's inspect our image one and you can see here we have three layers it is because we have used three instructions in our docker file in order to reduce size of the image docker always recommend you to use less number of layers in your docker file so how we can reduce number of layers let's see that as well so let me exit our full screen and let's go back to our docker file again but if you see this can we combine these two commands in a one run command yes obviously we can we just need to copy this command let's remove this run command and we will need to put ampersand as soon as first command get run completely we can run another command with this way we will save another layer in our docker image and hopefully it will be able to optimize our image okay let's try this let's save this and we will need to create another image okay now this time i will give name to this image image 2 okay so image 2 is ready now let me clear this up and let's inspect image 2 now now if you see here we have two layers only and let's create container of image 2 let's see if it actually works or not so if i use node hyphen v it will give same results as previous so this means using single run instruction we can run multiple commands so docker always recommend you to use multiple commands in a same run instruction in order to optimize your docker image okay so let's quickly summarize what we have learned okay basically run instruction in our docker file allows us to run commands inside our docker base image okay so the second property of run instruction is we can run multiple run instructions but docker always recommend to run multiple commands using ampersand with this way we will avoid creating multiple layers in our docker image 
This video is going to be really really important video because in this video we are going to be discussing about docker network okay so in this video we will discuss about docker bridge network and we will create our custom docker bridge network and we will try to assign that network to our containers okay and we will also see what is an importance of creating our custom network and what all benefits we will get after creating our custom network okay so let's get started but before we actually run any command so let's take one step back and let's try to understand what is network first so network is nothing but connection between multiple devices so for an example if multiple pcs connected to each other then we will call it as a network okay so in a network computers can share their information their resources and have a communication between each other okay so similarly in a docker also we will need network because if you remember docker property one of the property that docker offers is isolation so every single container that we are creating inside docker is isolated by default so basically that container will not have access to data of other container so if you want to communicate two different containers with each other then you will need to establish connection between them and that we will call as a network okay so we will need to create a network and we will need to connect those two containers on the same networks then and then only these two containers will be able to communicate with each other okay and that's what exactly we are going to demonstrate in this video so let's get started okay so first of all let me increase font size and let's start with basic command so we have docker network command and we have multiple options so let's first of all let's try to list all the available network using docker network list command so here we have three default networks okay and in your case also you will find this three default networks so first is bridge second is host and third one is the none okay so we will see all of this one by one but for now for this particular video we have decided to focus on bridge network okay so we will stick with this bridge network only okay so by default whenever we create docker container those container gets assigned to this bridge network okay so if you don't specify any specific network then whatever the container you're going to be creating will get assigned to this particular network okay so but docker always suggests you to create your own network in order to maintain security because if you create your own network you will have better control over that network you will know which container is in is a part of that network and you will be able to maintain security of that container and that network okay so docker always recommend you to create your own network okay so so first of all let me create one basic docker container so let me use docker run command and in this case i will use detached mode i want its interactive terminal and i'm gonna create ubuntu terminal all right and let me specify bin bash and one more thing i will give name to this container let's say uh, demo one okay and i think that's it if i create the container so now it is working and you one thing you might have observed here i have not i haven't specified any network here okay so as i mentioned earlier if you don't specify any particular network by the time of creating container this container will get attached to default network we can verify that as well so what i need to do here is i need to inspect this particular network to check whether this container is attached to this network or not okay and the way we can inspect this network is simple inspect command we need to specify docker inspect and we will need to give network id so it's uh, b19 okay and as you can see here inside the containers list we have one entry and you can also check name of the container okay the so name of the container is demo one so this is how it works 
so currently we do not specify any network that's why it is under the default bridge network okay so now let's do one thing let me create one customized bridge network and let me first of all clear all the terminal so i'm going to create custom bridge network and we will try to assign that container and we will try to assign that network to the container okay so the command to create custom network is docker network create and then using hyphen d we need to specify the type of network so in our case we are trying to create bridge network and then you will need to specify name of the network okay it could be anything in my case i'm going to give it a name mynet okay and that's pretty much it you just need to press enter and your network is now ready so let's list all the networks and now you can see we have one custom network okay you can also check its type its type is bridge and this is its id okay so now if i inspect this docker inspect b7 now if you see here under the container section uh, it's here under the container section there is no entry that means this network do not have any container assigned okay so let's quickly create one container so let's quickly create one container i'll use our previous command itself this time i will give container name to two but now this time we will assign specific network to this container okay so we need to specify network option and then you need to specify name of the network so in our case we have created network with the name mynet that's why i have mentioned mynet here all right and let me hit enter okay so now our container is ready let me inspect b7 again and now if you see here our custom network this is our custom network by the way you can see mynet um, which is our custom network and if you see here inside the container list now we have one entry and our demo2 container is now a part of mynet network okay so this is really simple you can assign network to our container by the time of creating it in this video we will take this even further and we will try to create actual scenario where we will understand why do we need to create our custom network okay so we will try to create real life scenario so what i have planned to do here is i will create one container which will serve apis and we will create another container that container the second container will try to ping apis or try to access apis of our container one by default docker containers cannot communicate with each other because docker believes in isolation so every single container will run in the isolated environment okay but in real life scenarios we need to communicate with the docker containers in order to get in order to get outputs from them so we are trying to create situation here okay so let's get started so let me enter into the full screen first let me increase its font size so this is the fresh server so we need to create our network again so let me use docker network command and as you already saw we need to specify type of network so in our case it is bridge and we need to specify name of the network so i'll specify same name i want my um, network name to be mynet so that's it let me enter now our network is ready so let me check that as well docker network so as you can see now we have one more network with name mynet to once again so in order to create the actual scenario we will need one api server okay so for that purpose i have choose this particular image and if you want to see what it is doing you can also refer this github repository so let me explain you in a brief so this particular image is published by i don't know this particular user and this is nothing but a basic node js api okay it is using express js internally i have already seen its code so i can explain you so as you can see here it is using express js and as soon as you try to access this apis it is only serving one api and that is also get method uh, and that is also get api and as soon as we connect to this server we will be able to see this particular message 
after that we will create another container with ubuntu image and we will try to access this api from the ubuntu server okay let's try to do that so let me go back into docker playground and let me use docker run command and in here we will need to run this api server in detached mode but i want its interactive terminal um, i don't think we, we will need but let's keep this for now and we will need to open port number okay because this image is serving some apis and that apis will listen to particular port number and if we don't expose port number of that server uh, of that container then we will not we will not be able to access apis from this uh, from this container okay so in order to verify which port number we need to expose we will need to see the code okay and as and in here you can see this is the port number this particular code is using so we will need to expose port number 8080 okay currently i am keeping both port numbers same so this is the port number of my launched instance and this is the port number of the image this is the port number of the container okay so if you want to change this port number you can do that but for the sake of simplicity i have kept both the same okay and after that we will need to specify name it's not mandatory but it's a good habit so i'm going to keep it like app1 okay and the last part is you need to specify name of the image from which you want to create this container so in our case it is and that's it we can hit enter and now it is started creating our container okay and let's create one more container with name app2 and this container is again uh, serving apis so we will but but this time the difference is we will assign specific network the network that we have created and our network is my net network and since this is running on the same server so we need to mention another port number okay so let's run this again all right this is also running so now currently we have two containers one container is attached to default network and another container is attached to our private network okay so now what i'll do here is i will create another container and that container will be our ubuntu container okay and i'll show you what we are going to do with that but before that let's quickly create it okay and i'll assign our private network to this ubuntu container okay and let me use ubuntu version 14.04 and uh, i want to use bin bash that's pretty much it let's enter all right so our ubuntu container is also ready okay so now let me check all the containers so as you can see here now we have three different containers our first container is ubuntu container which we have just launched and this we will use to ping our apis okay and then we have launched two different api servers but the only difference between these two servers uh, the only difference between these two containers is one container which is app1 is connected to default bridge network and app2 container is attached to our private network okay so let me show you our networks as well so we have our default bridge network and we have our custom network so let me inspect this bridge network again so as you can see our default network has one container attached okay and it this is the ip address of app one container and if i inspect our custom network so as you can see we have two containers okay one is the app two container which is nothing but again the api server okay which is listening to port number 8081 and we have ubuntu container okay so the purpose of this example is if we try to access apis of app two container from ubuntu container then it should be 
able to access APIs because they both are on same network. But if Ubuntu container try to access APIs of app one container, which is on a default network, it should not be able to access it. Okay, let's verify that as well. So what I'm going to do here is I will use Docker attach command and I will use UB1 container. Okay. Okay. So now we are inside the Ubuntu container. Okay. So let me try to ping our app to container, which is this. And this is the IP address of app to container. So let me do that. I to 19.0.2 now if you can see here we can ping our app to container okay there is no packet loss we can easily ping our api okay but if i try to ping our app one container and let's try to find out app one container ip address and now if I try to ping this particular IP address 172.17.0.2 You see we cannot ping this IP address because our app one container is on different network. Okay. So now here we learn if our container is on the same network then and then only we can access our container so let me quickly explain you what we have done here so let me first list all the available containers okay so here is so here you can see we have created three containers ub1 app2 and app1 container Okay, so app one container is our API server, which is attached to default network. Okay, this is attached to default bridge network. We have created app app two container from same image, but but the, but the only difference we kept is we have assigned our custom network to app two container. Then we have created another Ubuntu container just to ping these containers. We have attached this Ubuntu container to our custom network. So now. So now app two and Ubuntu container is a part of same network, but app one container is on the different network. And with this example, we've learned how we can assign network to any particular container. And the reason why I'm saying this is the real life scenario, is because if you're creating web application and you have your backend server, you have your front end, you want to keep those containers as a part of same network so that then only they will be able to communicate with each other. Okay. So I hope you have understood this entire concept. If you have any questions or queries, you can ask that in the comments. In this video, we will discuss about host network in Docker. Okay. So Docker has different types of network like bridge network. Then there is overlay network. Then there is host network, which we are going to see in this video and there is network type none. Okay. So each network type has different features. Okay. In this video, we will see what all benefits we will get if we use host network. Okay. So let's get started. So imagine this is our container. So if you don't specify any network by the time of creating this container, then this container will automatically get assigned to default bridge network. Okay. So this is one of the type of network. So this bridge network assigns NAT, which is nothing but network address translation to this container. And this container gets its own IP address. Okay. So IP address of host will be different than IP address of this container. Okay. So in that case, network, which is inside this container is completely different than the network, which is in the host network. Okay. This is isolated. So network. So if you remember our react JS example, we were exposing port number three double zero or sometimes port number 80. And this is because we were using bridge network at that time. And since bridge network creates network isolation in the container, 
because of that whatever application that is running inside the container is not directly accessible to the host network unless and until we expose port number which is on which our application is running so once we expose port number that port number becomes accessible in host network by default host net by default host network cannot interact directly with network which is inside the docker okay so this is what we understood when we when we learn about bridge network now this host network change this scenario completely if we assign host network to the container then container does not get assigned to nat that means container will not have its own ip address then question might have arise in your mind if container do not have its own ip address then what will be the ip address of the container how other containers can interact with this container so answer is if you assign host network to this container then ip address of this container becomes ip address of host so let me explain you nicely let me delete this first all right so for an example this is your host host is nothing but your server currently imagine your host ip address is 1.0.0.0 okay this is just an example don't take it as as it is now if we assign bridge network okay this is bridge network and this is container with host network this is container with bridge network this is container with host network in case of bridge network as i already told you bridge network assigned a nat so this ip address will be different it could be like 1.0.0.1 okay like this but in case of host network if we assign host network by the time of creating our container then this host network ip address will become 1.0.0.0 okay so in short if we run our react js application here we don't have to expose port number 300 okay because network of host is shared with network of container okay there is no network I, I, there is no network isolation here so even if we don't expose port number 300 still we can access its content okay so let's discuss advantages of using host network so if we use host network we can optimize our performance okay because there is no nat intervention which is not there is there is no network access translation so that's the reason performance gets optimized okay and which also allows this container to handle large amount of port numbers bridge network will also have its own benefits but host network has this specific benefit using host network you can improve performance okay so let's see this in action let me go to playground again and i think let should let me delete existing instance let's launch new instance all right here so just to show you difference between host network and bridge network so i will create one container but i will not specify any network type so by default that container will get assigned to default bridge network okay this is how it actually works and then i will create another container but i will assign host network to that container and we will see what all difference that we see okay so let's create docker run i will give it a name let's say bridge one okay and i will use interactive terminal because i want to keep this terminal because i want to keep this container running and then i will specify name of the container name of the image so we are going to use ubuntu latest image we will access bash all right so now we are inside our docker container terminal so we will press control p q to exit from the terminal okay similarly let's create another terminal this time i will give it a name host 1 okay but now this time i will specify network type 
so i will specify network as a host okay so this container also got created i will again press control p q to exit from this container terminal okay so now we have two different terminal so now we have two different containers one is assigned to default bridge network and one is assigned to host network okay so now if i show you containers list so we have two containers running okay so now let's inspect our first container which is bridge one in here you will see inside the network section you will see this is this got assigned to default bridge network and if you see IP address of this container is 172.17.0.2 okay now let's do the same thing and let's let's inspect our host network container okay so let me clear this first So host network container is 827 okay in here you will see this container got assigned to host network and if you see IP address then you will not see any IP address this is because as I already mentioned if you assign host network to any container then IP address of okay then that container does not get assigned to any specific IP address so IP address of this container is nothing but IP address IP address of our host I hope you understood this concept but if you don't understand this let me go ahead and create one container uh, with react.js application okay so I will go doctr so I'll give it a name let's say react app and I will use our I will use our same and I will use same image which we have used in our previous videos which is hack stack okay we are using this react.js image and then I don't think we have to specify any other tags okay one, one thing you have to observe here I have okay I haven't exposed any port number okay I'm not exposing any port number still we will be able to access react.js application because we will assign network type to host so let me go ahead and use network type okay sorry network to host and that's pretty much it okay so now if I run this let me go back to our host and let me open port number 80 and as you can see it is loading our react.js application now this happened all because of our network of this container is not isolated and that's the reason even if we don't expose port number 300 still we can access content inside the container okay so i hope you have understood this entire host network concept if you have any questions or queries let me ask in the comments first of all let's try to understand what is docker swarm so docker swarm is a nothing but container management tool okay in some documentation you will find orchestration word don't get confused orchestration is another fancy word which is nothing but container management okay so docker swarm job is to manage our containers so it will create containers it will scale our containers it will delete containers if needed so all those management things docker swarm can do okay okay in our previous videos we have learned how to create containers how to delete containers but all of that we were doing manually but this docker swarm will do that automatically okay so now the question might have arised in your mind like why do we need docker swarm in first place why do we need management of containers so container management is important because that helps us 
to scale our application load balance it and maintain desired application state okay let's learn this with one example but before that i would like to explain you some common terminologies that we normally use in docker so first is node so node in a docker is nothing but instance of docker engine okay so imagine you can create your own physical machine and you can install your docker engine in that machine and you can call it as a node okay docker node could be your virtual machine as well on which you have installed docker engine all in all we can say docker node is an instance on which docker engine is installed condition is you have to install docker engine you can install that docker engine on physical machine or virtual machine it's all up to you okay so that is nothing but node so once you install that docker engine your machine becomes docker node okay then there is another terminology that is nothing but cluster cluster is nothing but collection of multiple nodes so node is nothing but machine on which docker engine is installed and if we connect multiple nodes together we will create cluster okay so then the next thing is docker swarm docker swarm is nothing but a clustering and orchestration tool now if we want to join multiple nodes of a docker together we will need some tool we will need some way to connect those nodes together and we can do that with using docker swarm so docker swarm is the tool that allows us to create multiple nodes together and create its cluster and we can manage that cluster which is nothing but orchestration okay so all in all we can say we have nodes which is nothing but machine on which docker engine is installed and then we can connect those together using docker swarm and once multiple nodes get connected together we can call it as a docker cluster okay and then docker swarm tool and this docker swarm tool also helps us to manage our created cluster which is nothing but orchestration of our docker swarm okay so i hope you have understood this terminologies now let's try to understand why do we need docker swarm in first place with one example okay now let's imagine i want to create one shopping website and this shopping website will obviously have one front end and one back end okay now if i want to create this entire website using docker then i'll need to create containers of my front end as well as back end services okay so here is one of the example let's say i know how much traffic i'm going to get so i think at the moment i think three containers of front end and three containers of back end will be sufficient okay but now once we deployed this entire website and one of the container stop working now how will you manage this condition because as per my current situation as per my current traffic i will need at least three containers running in order to serve all the requests that i'm getting but one of the container is now not working so this situation we cannot handle manually and that's exactly when we will need orchestration tool so this orchestration tools job is to monitor the existing state so this is nothing but before initiating this process if we give instructions like we want three containers of my front end and three containers of my back end then this orchestration tool will keep on checking whether the three containers of front end is running or not and if one of the container fail orchestration tools job is to create that instance automatically okay so that is the ultimate idea and that is the ultimate reason why we are going to use docker swarm right i hope you have understood this entire concept and in our upcoming videos we will learn more about docker swarm you just have to go here you have to start new session we have already seen we have we have already got introduced to this platform okay so here i'm going to go ahead and create new instance and as you can see now i have one node here okay so in order to start our docker swarm we have one command that command is docker init but before i run it i would like to list all the available nodes in the network okay so if you remember our docker basics 
what we are trying to do with docker swarm is we are trying to connect multiple nodes together and we want to create its cluster okay so first of all let's try to list all the available connected nodes okay so for that we have one command docker node ls this command will list all the available network all the available nodes in the network okay if i run this command you will see i got one error let me zoom it let me zoom it so here i got error now this happened because currently our docker swarm is not initialized okay so here you can see in the description they have mentioned you have to initialize your docker swarm first before you run this command or before you start checking connected nodes okay so in a so okay so in a swarm there are two types of docker nodes one is your worker node and another one is your master node master will help to manage your worker nodes okay so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to initialize docker swarm here so that my current node will become master node okay so let's try to do that we have one docker swarm init command and then i'll have to mention advertisement address okay if i put directly hyphen hyphen help i will get some suggestions so what i want is i want this parameter okay so use docker swarm in it then advertise address and as a value i need to mention this particular ip address so it's 192.168.0.13 like this okay so so let's try to understand what this command will do so as soon as i hit this command this advertisement address will become an address through which we can advertise our master node so this address we, we can offer our worker nodes or any other nodes who wants to join our docker swarm okay so this is really important and if i click on enter so as you can see now our swarm is initialized using this docker swarm join command another node can join our docker swarm okay we will use this command in our upcoming videos but now if i use docker but now if i use docker node ls command here you will see one item is listed so this means our docker swarm is initiated all right so in our upcoming videos we will see how to join our created docker swarm right hello welcome all welcome in another important video in this video we will learn about docker swarm join command okay so first of all let me create new instance and let me initialize our docker swarm okay so let me enter currently if you see our setup we have only one node and that node is not a master node okay so that means our swarm channel is not initialized so we have one command so that is nothing but we have already seen this command which is nothing but docker swarm init command and this command we can use to initialize our docker swarm and we'll have to pass advertisement address and we'll have to pass advertise address 192.168.0.12 okay okay so now our swarm is initialized and you can use this docker join command and you can use this command to join new node inside this docker swarm okay currently if i list let me clear this currently if i list docker node ls currently if you see there is only one node in our docker swarm and that node is nothing but our leader node which is this node okay so let me go back here and let me create another instance okay that means i'm creating another node and we have already seen what is node node is nothing but a physical or virtual machine on which docker engine is installed okay so here i have created another node and this node is currently not a part of our docker swarm okay so let's try to make this node as a part of our 
docker swarm okay and i will join this node as a worker node okay there are two types of node you can add in your there are two types of node you can add in your docker swarm one is worker node another one is master node okay we will see both of them one by one so let's start so let's try to add this node 2 as a worker node each time your token gets changed so you don't have to remember join command but you need to understand how you can retrieve join command okay so the join command that i'm saying is a command that you can run in your another node which which you want to add inside your swarm okay so let's retrieve our join command so there is one docker so there is one command to retrieve it docker swarm join hyphen token okay and then if you want to add if you want to retrieve worker join command then you can type worker like this and here you have one command so you can copy this command and send it to the node which you want to add in your docker swarm okay so let me copy this so if you don't know how to copy it press control and insert now it is copied let me press alt enter to exit full screen and let me go back to our newly created node okay and i have to run this command over here okay then this node 2 will become a part of our swarm network okay so here let me press let me press shift insert in order to paste copy it command okay so now the command is here let me enter so as you can see we have this message this node join a swarm as a worker now let me go back to our master node and let me run that node command again so i'm going to write docker node ls now for node ls now if you see in our docker swarm we have another node which is node 2 and now this node 2 is not a manager that means obviously it is a worker node okay so this value is empty that means our node 2 is joined as a worker node okay now let's go back press alt enter let me create another instance and i will and let's see how we can join this node 3 as a manager node okay now let me go back to node 1 and let me clear it let me clear it okay and we have this we have we have to run docker swarm join token now i want to retrieve join command for the master well it's not a master it's a manager my bad okay so now this command you can use to join as a manager let me press control insert again let me exit full screen let me go back to node 3 shift insert let's clear this let me press shift insert again okay i think this is the mistake ip address is this ip address is wrong here okay now i think this should work let me enter okay so now you can see this node is also joined our swarm as a manager now let me go back here and you can clearly see the difference between worker node and manager node you will see this icon here if it is a manager okay but in this case this is worker node so there is no symbol and this is again join as a manager that's why you will see you will see this symbol okay now to verify it once again let me clear this and let's run docker node ls command okay so now if you see inside the manager status it is reachable that means these two nodes is joined in a network as a manager node now this node is your worker node okay, okay. so this is how you can use join command and add any node as a manager or a worker and in this video we will learn about docker swarm service okay so let's get started so before we actually start with docker swarm service let me explain you how we were creating containers earlier and how we will create containers 
from now on okay so earlier we were using single node okay so if i have to explain you we were earlier we were simply creating new instance and that instance is nothing but our node because if you remember definition of node node is nothing but machine on which docker engine is installed on which docker engine is already installed so this is our node and we were creating containers on it but now in real life scenario we will need to work with multiple nodes and the reason behind using multiple nodes is because docker always believes in distributed environment okay so for an example if you are working on very big project for example you are creating one trading platform so in that case you will have to use multiple nodes because single node will not be able to serve to all the request okay because trading application will have to deal with security it it will have to deal with lot of data also the authentication login and lot of different things so in that case you will need multiple servers multiple nodes to get it done okay so imagine now you have decided okay you will create three different nodes and these three different nodes will serve all the services now you will have to make communication between node 1 node 2 and node 3 it cannot work independently because node 1 status is required in node 3 and node 3 status is required in node 2 so communication between different nodes is required and we will also need to manage these nodes because whenever we will create containers if any container stop working we will have to restart it okay we cannot do those we cannot do this thing manually because in real life scenario in a production version it depends on it depends on application but big applications will normally have containers more than 100 and 200 containers so you cannot manage those containers manually and that is the reason why we use docker swarm also okay so if i have to explain role of docker swarm service so docker swarm service allows us to create containers on a distributed environment this is the important this is important statement let me explain you once again so basically docker swarm service to distribute helps to create containers on a distributed environment meaning of this is so currently so imagine you have three different nodes in your project and you want to create new container so in that case docker service will have information where docker service can create new container because there is a possibility that node 2 and node 3 is busy okay so in in that case if you create container on node 2 it will it will not work because it will run out of resources so in that case you will have to in that case you will have to create container on node 1 but normally you don't have to worry about it because docker swarm service will take care of creating new container on a specific node automatically all right docker swarm service is smart enough to identify which node is not busy and which node is busy based on that docker swarm service takes those decisions okay so i hope you understood difference between at the approach we were creating our containers using docker run command and the approach which we will use now on to create containers in our docker swarm all right i hope you have understood this but if you don't don't worry because we will see this with one example okay so let's get started so as you can see i have one session running let me delete all nodes here okay so now we have empty session so let me go ahead on this setting option and i will create docker swarm network with one manager and one worker okay we have already seen this in our previous video okay so i hope you will not find this difficult okay so now currently we have one docker swarm network and in this in, in that swarm network we have one manager and we have one worker okay so let me go ahead in a manager and let me use one command and that command is so inside this manager i will use docker service ls command so as you can see we do not have any service running at the moment and 
if we try to use the same command on our worker let's see what happens okay this command is not allowed in worker node because worker node will not have information about other nodes it will work independently okay so whatever the docker swarm command will have to run will have to run it on our docker manager okay so let's go ahead and let's create one docker swarm service and i will explain you how it works okay this command is really simple so we'll have to use docker service create command in order to create new service and let me give name to this service so let's say uh, i'll give it a name nginx1 okay and i'm going to create i'm going and i'm going to use nginx image okay that's, i think that's it so currently i'm not going to make this command complicated although we can pass multiple parameters we will see that we'll see that later on but for now we have really simple docker service command so let's see what is what it will do okay so this command will create container from this particular given image okay and it will assign name to this service as a nginx1 okay let me run this so now it is started working it will fetch nginx image first because we do not have this locally available so let's wait until this completes all right so as you can see the execution is completed and now if i use docker container ls command okay so this container is created inside this node itself if i use same command which is nothing but docker container ls so as you can see we do not have any container in our worker node so now what i'll do here is i will run this command once again and now at this time i will assign name to my service as a nginx2 okay let me run this all right this is also executed now technically i run this command twice okay so two containers should get create of nginx image now if i use docker container now if i use docker container ls command again you will see i have only one container at this moment okay and you might be wondering where the second container where is the second container okay and the second container we will find in our worker node so let me enter in this let me clear this and let me use docker container ls okay so you will see we have nginx container in our worker node as well so basically and if and if you want to match name you can see this name nginx2 which is name of our service okay so now let's try to understand what happened here initially i simply executed docker service command on our manager and created one service so let me list out all the available services okay so currently as you can see we have two services running nginx1 and nginx2 nginx1 service created container on manager 1 node and nginx2 created container on our worker node okay so let's try to understand what happened here so we can relate this with our previous example so what i explain here is if your particular node is busy or maybe working with some other containers docker service or docker swarm is smart enough to identify that and it will create container on a node which is free so that's exactly what happened in our case as well so when we run our service command in the first time it created container in our manager node okay and once the manager node occupied with one service and well, occupied with one service and when we run a create service command second time 
this time our docker swarm service identified okay our manager node is busy so let's create container on the node which is free and in our case the node was free at that time was worker node that's why second time when we run docker service create command it created container on our worker node so this is how the docker swarm and docker swarm service ultimately docker swarm service will create containers but it is creating containers a little bit smarter way it will do a lot of other things as well and there is there are a few other benefits of using docker swarm service command we will see that in our upcoming videos I think in this video we will learn how we can visualize our docker swarm okay so currently as you can see we have a very simple and minimalistic setup we have one manager and one worker node in our docker swarm but in a real life scenario specifically if you are working on big project so in that case you will have multiple containers okay and containers number can easily go up to hundred and thousands so to manage and to see which container is running and which container stop working it will become really hard to identify that so for that purpose we will need one visualizer which will display current status of our docker swarm in graphical format okay so let's see how we can integrate that visualizer in our project okay so currently we have two manager nodes uh, we have currently we have two nodes one is manager one is worker node and currently we have two services running in our docker swarm so we want to visualize that okay so for that purpose there is one open source project which name is docker swarm visualizer and you can see 3.1k people already already found this helpful so we will also try to use this visualizer in our project so as you can see in in the description you will see some screenshots so this, so this so this is how the visualizer will look like so let's go ahead and clone this link let's go ahead and clone this code okay so in our in our manager i'll go ahead and run this git clone command so if you don't know how to paste link just press shift insert and it will paste and let's clone this okay so now we have a code let me list out all the available files so as you can see we have one folder in our root folder let's go inside let's change our directory okay and we have this code so in order to start this visualizer will have to use one docker compose command and we have to run this in detached mode that's why i will put hyphen d my bad it's my it's a typo as soon as you execute docker compose up command it will start executing visualizer so it will it will take some time wait until that okay so now command executed successfully so as soon as this command will get executed successfully you will see port number 8080 is exposed and available to access so let's click on this and you will see visualizer of and you will see graphical user interface of your swarm network okay so currently we have one manager which is this one and then we have one worker node which is this one okay and uh, we have two containers running in our swarm network one is on manager and one is on worker node let's go in our worker node and let's cross verify this so i will use container ls command so currently as you can see we have one nginx container running in our worker so this is what it is showing up here if i add new node it will show up here let me try to do that let me create new instance okay currently this worker node will currently this node will not show in this list because this node is not a part of our swarm network but let me use docker join command so we, first of all we will need docker join command so we will need 
joint token of worker okay so we have this command let me copy this and let me go back to the node which we have just created and let me paste it here let's execute so as you can see this node is now a part of our swarm network and if i go back here you will see we've just added node 1 in our docker swarm so this is how it works data in a real time so which is really helpful this will reduce your lot of headache you can see the information in a graphical format in this video we will try to scale our docker swarm service so first of all let me show you our current swarm status so if i use docker service ls so these are the services running in our docker swarm and each of the service is created one container okay you can see that in visualizer as well so we have three nodes in our docker swarm one is our manager node one is our worker node and another one is also worker node what i'll do here is i will try to scale this particular service okay so scaling by scaling i mean i will create multiple replicas of this particular service okay and this is typical situation in real life scenario as well where you will have to scale your application if number of user increase okay and also you will have to scale down your application if number of user are less okay so this is a resources management technique so now imagine currently our application is running and now we saw like number of user increased and instead of one replicas now i'm gonna need four more replicas so for that purpose i will have to scale this particular service so that i can serve to the new to the new users so for that purpose we will have one simple docker command which is nothing but docker service we have simple command docker service scale and we'll have to pass this scale id just select this press control insert and press shift insert to paste it okay so this is our service id and is equal to we'll have to pass how many replicas we want to create so let's say i want to create three more replicas so let's quickly hit enter now it is started preparing our replicas let's wait until this complete all right so as you can see now all of these three replicas now ready and if i use docker service ls command you can see now we have three replicas here now if i go back to visualizer you can also see now we have four containers so that means one is our previously created container in our second service which is nginx2 and another containers got created as soon as we scale our application so this is how scaling in docker swarm works so i hope you have understood this entire concept if you have any questions or queries you can ask that in comments in this video we will learn about rolling updates in our docker swarm okay so let's get started so first of all let me go ahead and create a new session okay so now our session is ready and let's go ahead this icon will help us creating our docker swarm okay so we have already we already saw how to create docker swarm and how it works in our previous videos for rolling updates i think one manager and one worker setup will work so i'm gonna create one manager one worker swarm so let's click on this and you will see that our swarm is now ready but before we start executing commands for rolling updates let me explain you what is rolling updates and why it is important okay so let's go back to our drawing board okay so now let's imagine you have created one docker swarm service by using nginx image and its version is 1.4 okay now after two three months new version of nginx came 1.5 okay and obviously this new version will have new security updates new features 
and you want to integrate that into your project okay so in short you want to upgrade your services from nginx version 1.4 to 1.5 okay so now the question is how will you do it okay because your application is already in a production you cannot afford your application to go down that means you cannot stop this service which is running on 1. Point, which is running on nginx version 1.4 and start new service with nginx version 1.5 to start a new service with a new version it will take some time and during that time your users will face problems so you cannot afford this strategy so that's the reason why docker swarm come up with an option and that they call as a rolling updates so if you see here this is a simple command that will help us upgrading our docker image that we have used by the time of creating our docker service into the new version okay let's go ahead in our playground and let's try to implement this okay so i'm gonna go here into our manager first of all let me enter into full screen let me increase its font size okay i hope it is visible now okay so this swarm is freshly started so that's the reason we don't have any service at the moment okay so let's create new service first of all so i'm gonna go here create new service and let me give it a name let's say i don't know which image we should use i think we should use nginx image let me go to nginx docker hub and let's see what is the latest version of nginx image and with that we will decide which image we should use okay so this is official nginx image and if we scroll down we will see all previous version of this image okay so just for the demo purpose initially we will create our service with older version and then we will try to upgrade it into the latest version okay so let's go ahead and copy this 1.2 4.0 all right so i'm gonna create first of all let's give name to this service so let's say demo upgrade okay and we are going to use nginx image with version 1.24.0 let me verify it once again so it's version 1.24.0 we are purposely using older image because we want to upgrade that into the newer version using rolling updates okay so i think that's it we need to create this service all right i think our service is now ready let me list out all the services okay so our service is started and you can see we have used nginx image 1.2.1.24.0 okay which is the older one now like i explain you here so now the new version of nginx image came so in our, in our case the new version is 1.25.1 okay and now our service is already running and i want to upgrade this service into newer image so how we can do that so we can do that using rolling updates so there is one command let me clear this up first so there is one command docker service docker service update and then you have to pass image which you want to use so i want to use nginx image again but this time i want to use latest version okay or else we can specify version as well let's specify version 1.25.1 okay and after that we have to specify name of our image so first of all let me list all the services okay so this is my service and let's try to upgrade this service now so there is one command docker service 
update and the name of the image will be ngi.nx now we want to upgrade this version with the latest version so latest version is 1.25.1 so we have to specify this okay and then at the end we have to specify id of the image which we want to upgrade so we want to upgrade this so let's press Control insert to copy and shift insert to paste and i think that's pretty much it we have we have simple command which will help us updating our swarm service so wait until this executes completely all right now it is executed successfully let me list all the services again now if you see our latest okay now if you see the version number change so this service got updated with nginx version 1.25.1 so this is how simple it is to roll out new updates in docker swarm if you want you can also use inspect command to see when it was updated last time so you can do this and if you see let me scroll up okay so you can see this is created at this particular timestamp and i have updated that at this timestamp okay so you can also check when it was updated last so that you can make sure your updates work fine okay so i think that's it for this video i hope you have understood this entire concept 